Hi there, Zolka here, and in this video I'm showing you my cards that I've created with the Spa Binders September Small Die Kit. So here's the kit, um, which at this point you probably already saw. It's a bunch of leaves um, that you can uh, stitch or embroider, um, and they all come with an outline die. And then you have the words, uh, words Hello Fall. Um, again with outline dies so you can create different uh, style cards and sentiments with that now um, as you can see like always you have the lines that will help you stitch um, that will be embossed into the paper but I decided to not follow these in this video you will see what I mean in a bit um, and first I just die cut everything and then uh, the, to the leaves I'm adding a layer of heavyweight white, white cardstock because I like them sturdy and actually this is very helpful when you stitch as well so that your project or that your die cut pieces don't um, warp you know from all the handling some of them are quite skinny like the um, that green leaf there if you um see what i mean from all the handling while you are stitching those would warp and um dam damage get damaged so i don't know i prefer um doing that and i did that with the white leaves as, as well because my plan was to stitch uh with the same color uh embroidery floss on the uh, color cardstock and the white cardstock as well just to achieve two different looks um, and I will show you I think one or maybe two leaves I um, stitched them and I stitched all of them the same way um, you will see it will make sense I hope um, so normally you, you would go um, where the whole um, embossed lines are but uh, if you know any of the previous Spabinders stitching dies you know that Spabinders often um, creates the pattern with one hole as a like a starting point and then you go back and forth between that hole and the other holes and that's exactly what I'm going to do here um, I'm not going to do backstitch in all the holes in the middle so like the middle vein in the leaf I'm only stitching one large stitch and then I'm gonna use the bottom hole um, as a center point let's say I don't know if that makes sense and I'm going left and right and then up the um, edges of that leaf but I'm going to lift this up in a bit and then you will I think you will see what I mean and I was a bit worried that the hole is not going to be enough big um, or big enough because it's the same size everywhere right because the so this is what I mean um, if you know spabinder stitching dies often they do that kind of design um, so normally that hole is bigger but in this case that was not the intended use so it's not, um, which is why I'm only using uh, three str uh, strands, so half of the um, floss basically. Um, and it was just right, so it was not too tight and there's also no, <laughs> no more space I'd say. It was just perfect. And then I'm doing actually this one, I'm going to the same hole, I think on both sides of that leaf so I will actually uh, put in double the amount of stitches there but it it went through so it was um, also okay I turned that leaf around to show you so that you see it better on the white but um, now my um, stitching is not so nice on the front so I had to kind of um, rearrange those a little bit and I did not have enough um, floss left to do a proper knot there so I'm just going to um, twist it around 
but because I'm going to glue this down later, I'm going to add liquid glue to this so it should not come apart anyway. But I normally like to create a knot there to finish um, that um, strand, but I think you will see that as well. It's just a simple knot, but I'm just um, kind of looping it around the um, thread at the back of that leaf just in a way that you cannot see the knot from the front, you know, through the holes or um, whatever, that it doesn't create a huge um, dimension. But, I mean, the whole stitching does create quite a bit of dimension. So when I glue this down, I like to just add the liquid glue to, to the uh, thread, not even the, the paper. I'm just not even adding any glue to because... There's so much dimension behind it that I cannot press that down onto the background, if that makes sense. And because there's all these holes, I also don't use uh, foam tape because you would be able to see it. And that bothers me more, um, to be honest. But so far, I haven't had a problem with um, gluing the thread to paper. It stays put. And, um, well, I did not try to uh, later tear it off <laughs> but I think so the projects I have so far they have not fallen apart so I trust that this works okay so soon I'm going to finish this leaf and then I don't know if I'm showing another one I don't quite remember if I edited that out or not I had some more um, in but they will um, they all use the same technique you will See that they you can always find a center point and go from there. And now I should finish that off. And this is what it looks like. I kind of like that look. And then on this one card, I'm going to add a, a lighter layer um, of a background to the colors. And on this one, it's just going to be all white uh, with the color stitching so apparently i edited out the other leaf but i think you when you look at the finished projects or even here you see where my starting point for each leaf is it's very simple and it goes quickly as well so this is what i do i just add the liquid glue on top of the um what is it the thread and as you can see only at the bottom because there is more dimension there where the center points are so and after that uh, I'll add something heavier on top just until they are dry and now I use this old uh, die kit from last year to cut all uh, these color stripes obviously you can just use a trimmer for this i just really like the edges that the die creates and since i have the die why not use it as well and then um this one creates three different size stripes so um i cut them all from all the colors that i used for the leaves and um i am no now trying to figure out um how to you know what order i want i only wanted um at this point i only knew that at the bottom i wanted the forest cardstock because i wanted to add um a foiled sentiments i'm so out of breath because <laughs> it's so hot in here and i i don't know i'm just out of breath um so the forest cardstock at the bottom the the widest strip and then I will use some gold um, foil. And I think I will foil that here on camera. I normally don't like to just uh, get out my um, glimmer machine for one sentiment. I, I like to then do a bunch of sentiments at the same time. But I was in such a rush, I just really only did one sentiment. <laughs> and now I realize I have a lot of extra strips. So why not layer them up? So some of them I'm going to add an additional layer to. It's a bit more colorful that way and maybe more interesting. There's a bit more texture to it. 
So just I just suggest that you pay, play around with this. There's no um, right or wrong here. So um, this is always fun, you know. There's so many ways you can add stripes to your projects. Or what I also wanted, had I had more time, um, I wanted to create uh, really, really skinny uh, strips that I would have uh, used my trimmer for and then I would have die cut the leaves um, you know the outlines of the leaves from that and I would have added the white um, stitched leaf on top of that so basically you only see the outlines it's colorful and striped and that was one of the ideas that I didn't do and then the other idea that I did not have time for um, I wanted to use the outline die as a, you know, to create like a peak, like a window on the card front and then add the leaf to the inside of the card. So when you open it, the leaf is on the inside and uh, there's a window on the outside, if that makes sense. But I did not have time. So <laughs> I only have these two cards uh, for you today. And yeah, this is the set that I think I also used in the other video. So I'm using the champagne color. I got a few um, gold, I think probably, I don't even know how many, a lot of different gold uh, foils the, a few weeks ago because I'm always uh, using gold and always running low on, uh, on that. Uh, I also got some other colors but I somehow tend to only use gold. So here it is. And I actually managed to not mess that up. <laughs> I'm always worried. Uh, but it, you know, it turned out great the first time. So that will be a part of my sentiment. And I'm also going to use the um, hello that comes with the die set. And I'm going to die cut that from gold cardstock that is a bit different uh, it's a bit of a different goal than the foil but that was the closest match that I could find so I hope it's not too bad and then I am trying to figure out how I want those leaves to be um, I had all kinds of ideas just you know straight down vertically in the middle but then for that, I think you probably would only need three leaves or maybe even only two. And by the way, these cards are the large uh, five by seven inch size, which I really love lately. So much space and, you know, so much you can do with it. I really like it. And so now I am uh, finishing off this card and no i'm going to add one more thing and you guessed that right it's gonna be enamel dots and i'm trying to match the colors as much as possible not all of them are perfect match you know the um the tone is the same it's just different shades so yeah and then i press them down with the back of my old tweezers and then I'm moving on to the next card. This is an embossing folder that was released last month, but I didn't have time for it. Um, and it's, it's cool. I mean, it looks simple, but just check this out when I'm done with it. It's the, um, I don't remember the name of this card stock, the ivory color. Look at that. I mean, these new um, 3D embossing folders are so amazing. You could... I feel like you don't even need anything on top of them. Maybe a sentiment and that's it because they are just so beautiful. So, but me being me, <laughs> I'm adding all kinds of things. So I'm kind of trying to um, make like a frame from that leaf, uh, from those leaves, if that makes sense. So basically I just did two of each design and then I'm trying to figure out which would be the best way to place them. And of course, so originally what I would want to do with anything like this is to create a random pattern, 
in like a random background pattern where the leaves go all kinds of ways and then there's very little space between them. But because these are stitched, I don't have that option because I cannot just trim off a stitched piece or at least I don't want to because I don't want anything to come apart. So that's why I am creating the design where I only have to trim off the uh, stem or a part of the stem which is not stitched. So this is why I decided um, on this design. But if they were not stitched, I, I obviously would cover the whole um, background with them. All the colors, you know, <laughs> I love all the colors. And so here I go, um, cutting them off, trimming them off. And um, then my card front is done. And I will really keep this simple. I will add it to on top of a um, white um, card base and you can see that I'm adding some foam tape here. It's a very thin foam tape but I find that this kind of um, with the 3D embossing folders I'm trying to be a bit more careful because it's they are very dimensional and I feel like when I'm adding liquid glue they warp so I'm always using this um, thin uh, maybe it's two millimeters uh, thick the the foam tape that I'm using and it always turns to be turns out to be nice so it gives that a uh, little bit of dimension and also it makes the um, embossing folder kind of flush so it's it I find it to be good but maybe you have other ideas and then I finished this off with the hello um, die cut again and I did not add any enamel dots to this. So here are my two cards. They are simple, not too um, time consuming either. I hope you give uh, give them a try or I hope I could uh, inspire you with something. And then I'll be back on the 14th with a surprise. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you then. Bye bye.